When you receive an inheritance, a big inheritance, do you have to pay taxes on that? Well, there's a couple different types of taxes and there's a couple different answers. So we're gonna get into that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, so if you're fortunate enough to receive an inheritance, do, do you have to pay taxes on it? It's one of the largest questions. Now, recent survey, uh, most people do not receive inheritances, and the average inheritance, if you do receive it, is between 10 grand and 50 grand, okay? And so we're certainly talking about, well, is that subject to tax and, and how would that work? I also wanna hit, well, what, what if you receive more than that? And what if you receive cash or inherit a house or inherit a retirement account? How does that all work? So let's get into it. So the first question is, is there an inheritance tax? And I think as I've been doing this for 20 years and I've served lots of clients, that's most commonly the question, is there an inheritance tax? Well, thankfully, most states have gotten rid of inheritance taxes. Just a couple of states, Iowa, Kentucky, Nebraska, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, not, not that many, thankfully. When I first moved to Indiana, Indiana had an inheritance tax, no longer have that, and lots of states previously had it and no longer have it, so that's a good thing. So from, from that standpoint, most people don't have to pay an inheritance tax. Now, that's at the state level. At the federal level, the inheritance tax is really called the federal estate tax. And this one's nasty, guys. This, this tax rate is nearly 50%. So it's, it's a, I mean, imagine receiving an inheritance and having to give half of it to the, to the government. And so, uh, but here's the good news. Over time, the amount of the size of your estate that you're able to have without paying any estate tax has increased significantly. Right now, it's just shy of $13 million that, that you would be able to have in an estate without having to pay any estate taxes. So north of that, north, north of that 13 million, you may have to pay some estate tax. There's currently, if you're married, and your spouse passes away and they don't use their 13, they can carry that forward to their surviving spouse. So there's some other rules there that even if you're above 13 million, there may not be an estate tax. But listen, that, that means the vast majority, the vast majority of people when you receive an inheritance, you're not gonna have to pay an inheritance tax at your state unless you live in just a couple of these. And there isn't a federal estate tax either. Sometimes, People look and call probate an, an inheritance tax or an estate tax. It's not what it is. Probate is the process of transitioning assets through a will, process through the will of, hey, it was owned by this individual. They passed away. Their will says it's supposed to go to this individual. So the, the lawful and, and attorney process of getting that those assets transitioned, attorneys charge a fee for that. That's called probate. It's not a tax. It's not a penalty. It's sort of a, a fee for service. And a lot of states, if your estate is below a certain level, there's a there's a uh, small estate affidavit that uh, avoids some of those probate and makes the process super super easy. But that's separate than an estate estate tax or an inheritance tax. So that should be the end of the story, right? Not really, right? So that is, if you receive an inheritance, is there an inheritance tax or an estate tax? And we just clarified that. But but that's that's inheritance tax or estate taxes. What about a different type of tax? income taxes. Most people aren't thinking about that. And so therefore, on that inheritance, is there income tax? And that depends on the type of asset, the type of money, the type of, uh, of, of resource that you're inheriting. So let's go through a couple of these. If you inherit a retirement account, if you inherit an IRA, 401k, a pre-tax retirement account, there will be income taxes when you withdraw this money. Transferring that money from the previous owner into your, into your name, you create a, an inherited or uh, BDA, beneficial designated account. As you withdraw those dollars from that pre-tax retirement account, you've got to report them on your tax return. So inheriting the dollars from a inherited a retirement account, pre-tax retirement account is not taxable, but as you are forced to withdraw money out of that account, you do 
have to report that as taxable. You're required to withdraw that entire account within 10 years, and we're still waiting for the IRS to tell us, well, do you have to take some each year as well as empty it within 10 years? If you inherit a Roth type of account, Roth 401k, Roth IRA, you still have to withdraw it during that 10 year time period, uh, but it's not taxable when you withdraw the money because that's how the Roth is set up, one of the advantages of the Roth. So that's re inheriting retirement accounts. What if you inherit a non-retirement account? And so if you're confused about what that would be, that would be someone just owning a joint account, a trust account, an individual account where maybe they bought some investments down here and today the account is worth up here. Do you have to pay tax on that? Well, you wouldn't have to pay tax on that capital gain because there's something called a step up in cost basis. So if let's take for very simple example, someone invested in a open, open to joint account or individual account, invested 10 grand in it, and it's now worth 25,000. Well, normally if that person sold that investment for 25,000 before they passed away, they'd have to report that 15,000 of capital gain and there'd be, they'd have to pay income tax on it. But if they passed away, then, the, then you who inherited it now inherit it where your cost basis is now 25,000 instead of 10. And therefore, if you sell it at 25,000, your cost basis is 25,000, there's no capital gain tax on that. If you inherit it at 25,000 and it grows to be 50,000, well, then you have to report that difference from 25 to 50 uh, as capital gain when you sell it. So that's how, that's how non-retirement investment accounts work. What about cash? Nope, there's no, there's, there's no income tax on inheriting cash. So that example of, uh, of on average, if you receive an inheritance on average, it's 10 to 50 grand, something like that. That's just, if that's just cash, there's no income tax on that. And then finally, what about inheriting a house? Well, a house is gonna be treated similarly to that non-retirement investment account, where if the house was, you know, the person originally paid this and all of their improvements and everything was this, and it's worth this when you, when you inherit it, well, there's a step up in cost basis. And therefore, if you sell it right away or within the first six months or something like that, then essentially there's gonna be no gain on that, on, on that house because the value stepped up to what it would be presumably worth when that, when that individual died. So if there's a gain from that point and you weren't living in that house, so if you inherited it and you moved in and lived there for two out of five years, then you sold it, you'd be eligible for the home, uh, home tax exclusion. But if you didn't live in it for two out of five years and the value when you inherited it was this and it grew to this, then you would have to pay tax on that. So inheriting the house, normally people sell it right away or, or kind of clean it out and fix it up and then sell it. And in those instances, it's not going to be taxable either, income taxable either. All right, finally, under the sort of umbrella question of when I receive an inheritance, do I have to pay tax on it? The final inheritance that people receive is life insurance. So an individual had life insurance, they were paying premiums on it throughout their life, and then when they passed away, there was a death benefit that the insurance company pays out. Generally speaking, there's a lot of different flavors of life insurance, but generally speaking, when you receive that life insurance death benefit, when you receive that payout from the life insurance, it is generally not taxable. Some of them, certain life insurance policies can be, depends on who owned it and who paid for it, right? But the common plain vanilla life insurance is the individual that that uh, that passed away they were also the owner and they were paying the premiums and they weren't deducting it and it wasn't a unique type of life insurance and therefore the death benefit is not taxable when that death benefit is paid out a lot of these insurance companies want to pay it out into a bank account that pays interest and they just send you a checkbook well that interest that that uh, that that death benefit is earning that's taxable if you also or, or instead receive that life insurance payout over a certain period of time, which they certainly suggest or, or, or they, they give you that option, rarely would it make sense to do that, by the way, but you'll wanna work with your CFP on that. Then as they make that payout, some of it is interest and therefore that interest would be taxable. But generally speaking, most life insurance death benefits when you receive that payout is not, is not taxable. So overall, Complicated, but good news. In general, 
most inheritances don't have an inheritance tax, don't, aren't subject to federal estate tax, and most of them don't have income tax either. Inheriting retirement accounts, that's where you would, and therefore, anytime you would receive an inheritance, you've got to make a wise financial choice. What are your options? What's the impact of each choice? And therefore, what's the wise financial choice for your situation? To the, the context that you need in order to make that wise decision is comprehensive financial planning. Looking at all six areas of your financial life to see what's the impact, what should I do with these dollars, what are the tax consequences, if any, and therefore what's the wise choice. Work with your certified financial planner on that. Make sure they're doing comprehensive financial planning. Make sure they understand the tax code and working with your CPA so they can give you wise counsel, great advice. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K, wisemoneytrip.com. You can find us there as well or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.